China has launched the third and final module to complete its permanent space station. The launch is the final part in a decade-long effort to maintain a constantly crewed presence in orbit. Joining us live is Malcolm Davis, Senior Analyst at the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. Malcolm, good to see you. Thank you. I understand the module arrived at the station early this morning. Did everything go to plan? Yes. Uh, so Meng Tian, which is the name of the module, uh, essentially has joined up with the Chinese space station, uh, which comprises a number of other modules. And it's going to essentially create that permanent presence in low Earth orbit for the Chinese space program. And that's uh, important for them because it essentially gives them a stepping stone to build up their experience and their capabilities that ultimately will serve them towards eventual moon missions in the 2030s. How many Chinese astronauts are living at the station now? Do we actually know much about what goes on there? Essentially, there's a, on average, there's a crew of three uh, at there at any one time. Supposedly, it's for scientific research, um, and I'm sure that does happen. Uh, but the Chinese space program is, is very different from, say, the likes of NASA or the European Space Agency. Uh, the Chinese space program is heavily integrated with the PLA, the Chinese military. And so it's quite possible that in addition to the science research and the commercial applications research that is being undertaken, there's probably also military activities occurring up there as well. And I think that's the reason, isn't it, that the US excluded China from the International Space Station because of its program's military ties. How much collaboration do other countries actually have with China in space? Well, you're right. Uh, there is concern that, firstly, the, the, the Chinese program is essentially heavily integrated with the military. That means that any collaboration that foreign states have with the Chinese space program, uh, essentially they're collaborating with the PLA. So for that reason, Australia does not uh, really collaborate uh, with the Chinese space agency. The Russians and the Chinese are working closely together. Uh, they have a, an effort towards what they call an International Lunar Research Station, that initially will be a, a, a autonomous, uncrewed base on the on the lunar south pole that ultimately will turn into a, 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 a crewed lunar base of people. Um, uh, but uh, really, it's, it's the Chinese and the Russians, uh, the Indians uh, have done some limited work with the Chinese space program on purely civil aspects. But there's an, also a lot of uh, Chinese collaboration uh, with, for example, South America and the Middle East. So how does China's program compare, for example, to the US? I've seen these reports that China's believed to be developing a highly secret space plane. Where are they at in terms of the technology compared with um, NASA, for example? Well, you know, look, they, on the one hand, they are starting from behind in many respects. Uh, you know, NASA have been in the business of exploring space since the 1960s. The China, Chinese have started a bit later. But they're making steady progress. And at the same time, NASA is kind of like plodding along with its uh, SLS launch vehicle that is well behind schedule and over budget. And it's quite possible that you might see by the uh, later in this decade that you could see China begin to challenge um, NASA's uh, lead in space. The Chinese, as I said, uh, do have plans for uh, lunar operations in the mid 2030s. But the interesting question is if the US lunar uh, uh, program is delayed significantly, which is quite likely uh, from the first lunar landing in 2025 to push it back maybe into the late 2020s, then you could see the Chinese be tempted to ex accelerate their own program so that they get back to the moon first. As you say, the Chinese are also developing other technologies. They have a space plane capability, which is something that the Americans don't really have in terms of sophisticated space planes, but uh, the Chinese are still yet to fly that. Um, and uh, the Chinese are still focusing very much on big, uh, expendable boost launch vehicles. You compare that, for example, to Elon Musk's SpaceX, where they're developing fully reusable launch vehicles that dramatically drop the cost of accessing space. So the Americans have some advantages. The Chinese are challenging those advantages. It'll be very interesting later in this decade to see who comes out on top. Finally, Malcolm, I see Australia is signing up to an anti-weapons satellite ban. What does that mean? How significant is it? What countries are involved? Look, essentially what we've done is we've followed the lead of the United States, Japan, South Korea, uh, Canada and New Zealand, and amongst others, the UK, to sign up to a, a ban on testing 
of destructive anti-satellite weapons. Uh, in November of last year, the Russians tested a destructive anti-satellite weapon in low Earth orbit, blew up a satellite, created a huge cloud of space debris that threatened a lot of other uh, satellites, as well as the International Space Station, as well as the Chinese Tiangong Space Station, which we were talking about earlier. And so uh, what Australia and the other Western democracies are trying to do is create new norms of responsible behaviour in space to convince countries like China and Russia not to go down this path of, of testing destructive ASATs. So by, by creating this unilateral ban, we're putting diplomatic pressure on those countries to sign up to it as well. If it doesn't follow through, if the Chinese and the Russians don't follow through and they continue to test these ASATs, then we are in a more problematic situation. But certainly from the perspective of Australia, we have no intention of testing or developing or acquiring um, uh, destructive ASATs that, that, if used, would create huge clouds of space debris. Mm, perhaps uh, we shouldn't hold our breath on uh, getting global cooperation on that one. Malcolm, it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. Really appreciate your insights as always. Thank you. Thank you very much.